Hey guys, in today's video, I will be sharing with you the details of my birth and delivery story. If you haven't seen the little mini vlog of my birth, it's the video right before this one. Let's get straight into it because I'm going to talk about the little details about it. So it's going to be TMI. So the night before the 28th, January 28th, um, I felt my abdomen like tightening and then loosening, tightening and then loosening. And it, uh, it was very, you know, inconsistent. It wasn't uncomfortable at all. It was just like a, a sensation I was just aware of. And I was assuming it was Braxton Hicks. So uh, I just didn't think much of it. And I just went to bed normally. And I have a daily alarm set for eight o'clock so that I don't oversleep. So the next morning, I woke up maybe like two minutes right before my alarm went off to the sensation of something popping inside of me. Like I didn't even open my eyes, like my mind just woke up and I felt it and I was kind of in denial about it, but I also was like, this is probably my water breaking. And so I had to like come up with like a little game plan to rush to the bathroom without making a mess. So I turned off my alarm at like 7.59 and I was just laying in bed. I wasn't, no contractions at all at this point. I was just like, okay, how am I gonna like efficiently and swiftly get out of bed and just rush to the bathroom? And thankfully the bathroom was like less than 10 feet away. So I like tested it, I got up slightly and of course it leaked a little bit and I was like, oh shit. So I just like got up and ran. So and I leaked a little bit on the bed, just like a couple drops and a couple drops on the floor, but not too bad. Got to the bathroom, sat on the toilet, and it basically felt like I was peeing out of two holes, essentially. It wasn't a full out gush. It was, I was peeing out of my pee pee hole and then out of my vagina. That's literally what it felt like. So after like one or two minutes, it just felt like a long pee. I put on a pad just in case I would you know, leak later on. It was like, 8.05 and so I just thought okay I'm just gonna go lay back down contractions weren't starting yet for me so I didn't want to wake Jason up lay back in bed and right as I lay back in bed the contraction started so I whipped out the contraction tracker app and started timing them and they were on average about eight to nine minutes apart so I wasn't urgent yet and I forgot after watching so many videos of different uh, birthing vlogs and such, I forget that the number one rule, if your water breaks, that's an immediate sign to go to the hospital. I don't know why that just like slipped through my mind, um, but I'll get to that later. So I was just laying in bed, timing my contractions. It just felt like some strong period pains for about a minute or like to 56, 50 seconds to a minute, so very bearable. Uh, I was able to just like breathe quietly next to Jason in bed. And then we got up around maybe 8.30, 8.45. Jason had work that day, but he said it would be a short tattoo session. So he was like, should I go to work still? And I said, I don't know because my contractions aren't close together yet. And you know, I, I was thinking that this whole labor and delivery would take like maybe 12 hours, that Ruby would be born later that evening. So I was like, take Lyca outside, you know, go for a walk, take, you know, let her do her thing. And then when you come back, I'll let you know. So he's like, okay, so like he went to go take her out. Um, I was still able to get things done, like brush my teeth, make some breakfast for all of us. And I waited until 10 o'clock until my OB off my OB's office was open to call him just to like make sure like what to do. Uh, so I know I think as I was laboring until 10 o'clock, there was a point where my a set of contractions were like four minutes apart, but then they went back to being eight to ten minutes apart. So I was like, should I be urgent or not urgent? So uh, right at 10, I called the office and told the reception lady, I was like, my water broke at 8 o'clock, but my contractions are still irregular. Should I go to the hospital? Again, I forgot that once your water breaks, you should go straight to the hospital. 
So she took like 30 seconds to ask the OB doctor and she was like, you need to go to the hospital. And I was like, oh, well, okay. This is happening now. And so uh, Jason came back and I was like, we need to go to the hospital. And thankfully our hospital bag was already like 95% packed. So he just had to pack his backpack of electronics, uh, bring his camera. I just had to pack, you know, our toothbrushes, shower slippers if I thought I needed it. Needed it and called the lift there. And thankfully we live, if we walk to the hospital, it would take about eight to 10 minutes, but through a car, it'd be five or less. So thankfully we live really close by and still to this point, my contractions were still bearable. I was still able to breathe, talk normally through them, but they were getting slightly more intense as we were waiting for the lift, but still manageable. So the lift, driver dropped us off across the street from the emergency room uh entrance and right as we were about to cross the street and contraction came and it was intensifying to the point where i said wait let me breathe through this contraction i like leaned against the pole and just like breathe for like a minute and then after I contraction, I was like, okay, let's just go. So we went to the emergency room. Jason told the people, was like, my wife's in labor. And one of the volunteers just standing there, he, he asked me, would you like a wheelchair? And I said, no, biggest regret. I should have said yes. But anyways, I said no. And then he directed me to the front desk to give him my information because I was a new patient. That was annoying because I was contracting and I was getting intense, more intense. Uh, that I had to kind of stop talking for a second to breathe and then continue answering her questions. So she asked me about like my address, insurance, and blah, blah, blah. That maybe took five minutes. And then uh, I was done. And the same guy who asked me for the wheelchair escorted us to triage. It was like down the hallway, around the corner, in the elevator to go up one or two floors. And I was contracting to the point where I, had a, I was like gripping the elevator handles. And just like, whew, whew, I was doing that. And I could tell the the volunteer guy was just like a little bit uncomfortable and scared. Like he was just like, like he didn't know what to do. So he uh, led us to the triage. Thankfully it wasn't busy at all. You know, it was just like a morning, a Thursday morning. And so I sat down, the lady was who was at the desk was also pregnant. And she was like, ooh girl like you labored until eight o'clock good for you and so she was very peppy in a way very nice asking me more damn questions and halfway through i got so uncomfortable like because the contractions were getting so much more intense i was like i put a hand on my knee and i was like trying to get myself comfortable on the chair as i was answering her questions and my body at this point just naturally started to moan. And I remember the like different vowels to help push down the baby further. So I was like mooing and uh, I think that was like my go-to sound. I was just like, Ooh. I was like that. And the, the, the lady was like, yep, just oh breathe, God. breathe through them, honey. You're doing so great. Like I'm like, I think she was like 26 weeks pregnant. She says, I'm going to be in your position in a couple weeks and trying to make small talk. And I was just like, not for it. I was just like, I even said, I was like, I feel like I have to push. And she was like, okay, honey, let me just like wrap up the questions or whatever. And then you can go into the room and, you know, get changed. So, uh, I went into the room. She's like, you know, undress yourself, wear the, put on the hospital gown and then I'll be right with you. Still no urgency, but I can tell my contractions are getting much more intense. So intense that I couldn't undress myself. Jason was holding all of our shit. And so I felt bad, but I needed him to do this at this point. I was like, can you help me take off my pants at least? So he like took down my pants along with my underwear and there was so much blood on my underwear or like on the pad. And so Jason was like, is that normal? And I was like, I think the baby's coming and so I was like moaning louder and I think the lady took it as me screaming because I heard her talking to the other nurse she's like wait wait hold on I hear her screaming she like came through the door as I was like I need a push I need a push like I was calmly saying calmly saying it I'm like rushing my words 
And so uh, she helped me lit, get lit, uh, get on the bed. I was laying down because I was so, I guess, tense from you know concentrating on my contractions that I couldn't like lay down by myself. So she helped me get on the bed. She, uh, the other nurse came in. I think it was like three nurses in this little small changing room, helping me take off my sweater, putting on the hospital gown, putting on the like the little tags on me, and checking my cervix. Um, I don't remember hearing them saying like what at what stage I was at. They were just at this point they knew that I needed to give birth to this baby now. So uh, the three nurses were. I don't know what they were doing because I had my eyes mostly closed for this. At this point, everything was a blur. Uh, from that point to me pushing, it was all a blur. I had my eyes closed for most of it because the contractions were just so strong. I had one hand like constantly gripping the back of the bed and the other hand was... <laughs> I even covered my mouth at one point. Of course, we all had our masks. I thought I heard Ruby crying. She's awake. Yeah. Hello. Are you hungry? Someone woke up from her nap and it was a cat nap. It was uh, about 53 minutes she napped. I thought I would be able to finish this video with, uh, with her napping but that's okay. So, uh, yeah, they finally started rolling me to the delivery room. <sighs> so that was like another elevator up. This hospital layout was really strange now that I think about it. So they rushed me to the delivery room and more nurses were there waiting for us. Um, poor Jason, I just caught a glimpse of him behind the nurses as they were rushing me to the delivery room, carrying all of our things, carrying the bag of clothes that I was wearing. But he's he's a trooper, you know? He's a good husband through this whole like experience. So the nurse uh, there uh, told me in between the contractions to hop on the bed, the delivery bed. And so I did that and they hooked up the IV. The lady had to do it twice because I think I was moving. She told me to keep my left hand still because my right arm was just, you know, permanently attached to the bed. She was like, uh, I need you to stay still, honey, so I can put the IV in you. And I was like, fuck. Because uh, at that point, like, I just need to, like, constantly move to, like, get comfortable and, you know, uh, coped through these contractions. So after she put the IV in me, I finally was able to, like, kind of turn to my side, you know, and kind of get comfortable a little bit. <gasps> oh, she's so cute. Uh, yeah, I just heard a lot of like talking and uh, hooking up to the monitor. I heard a lot of like the beeping noises that the monitors make. Uh, I heard them uh, call my OB and they're like, oh yeah, she's coming, she's on her way. She's up right down at the entrance. And uh, they're asking me to confirm uh, my pediatrician. <laughs> And so I was still able to talk because they were like, who's your pediatrician? And I was like, it's in my folder with all my other papers. And then uh, they were like, they had, they asked me like multiple times, like who my pediatrician was. And I was like, it's on a post-it note on the folder where all of my other documents are. They're like, oh, okay, we see. And so this it was all like chaotic at that point. And uh, Jason was so, so amazing. Um just kind of like supporting me. He was, uh, for most of it, his head was next to mine, uh, telling me, uh, you got this, you got this. And he, at one point, he was moaning with me too. And I was also gripping his hand. I even asked, am I hurting you? He said, no, 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 no. Keep, go keep doing what you're doing. So uh, I was holding his hand while still gripping the bed. And I was even worried that I was moaning too loud. I saw so I at one point was covering my mouth so I can muffle my sound. She always wants movement and I think it's because throughout my whole pregnancy with her, I walked every single day. I took like, cause I, was, I had to walk like a, so every single day for nine months straight, I was walking 
And so now, I think she's used to it from being in the womb. And she wants to be moving around all the time. Whoa. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, My Obi finally came through. And she was like hurrying on, putting on the scrubs, the hat, the gloves, bringing down the big ass light. Uh, had me like lift up my butt so they can layer the pads underneath me. Like they had me like adjust my position so that they could put all like the tarp and papers underneath and shit. And then finally the moment came because at this point I felt I could I think I could feel her head already coming out or like you know crowning. She said, "All right, Annie. Oh wait, oh my, I forgot to say." I even had a breaking point right before she gave me the go to push. I like, I remember I was turned to the side, gripping the hospital handle. At a point I was like, is it too late for an epidural? And one of the nurses, I heard her say, honey, you're at a 10, you gotta push. And I was like, oh my God. I didn't even have the time or break to even comprehend like, oh shit, this is actually happening. <laughs> So uh, the nurses, all the nurses were so nice and kind to me. Uh, I think one of them named Lisa, as I was, you know, in pain and moaning, she was like, hi, my name is Lisa. Like, uh, I was still able to, you know, open my eyes at some points to look at the nurses when they were talking to me. She was like, my name is Lisa. I have four kids of my own, no epidural. So you got this, honey. You can uh, power through this. You're doing amazing. They're all so nice, so uh, I had a breaking point, asked for epidural, it was too late, and then, you know, uh, my OB was like, e okay, on your next contraction, you can push. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, birth on all fours, that's why I ideally wanted to do, but because it happened all so fast, I, you know, automatically opted out to be on my back. I was on my back and I was holding my own legs up, you know. Uh, because that was what's most comfortable for me. And so she was like, okay, push. And so after about, I think three to five pushes, Ruby was out. And the ring of fire, let me talk about that for a second because fortunately it wasn't as fiery as most women would say in their experiences. Uh, it, I think because it happened so fast, and maybe my pain tolerance, but it, I did feel my vagina stretch more than usual. I did feel a heat sensation, but she came out like a big piece of poop. Like, you know, okay, we're getting really specific here. You know the feeling when you start to push out that big poop? It hurts because it's stretching your butthole. And once you keep pushing, pushing, and then like the end of it, it's, it feels so good because it tapers off and it just like, shoop, like it just slips out. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what it felt like birthing Ruby. So after her shoulders, because that was for me, I think the ring of fire, uh, she just she just like a like a slippery bar of soap just like slipped out, and that was like the you know tapered end of the of the poop, if you know what I'm saying. So that was like that was like a a breath of relief or like a sense of relief. So I was like, oh my god, and I, uh, uh, can can you let me talk? So they immediately put her on my chest and so they immediately put her on my chest and I started crying and I say that with air quotes because tears weren't coming out but like I was like ah, I was like that because the pain was finally over Ugh, like I was just like so tired and that I think that was like a cry of again like I said relief and so uh, Jason cut the umbilical cord Pushing out the placenta was really easy. It was like one or two pushes came out really, again, it just felt like a slippery bar of soap just like came out again. And uh, I had a first degree tear. I think it was mostly internal. Uh, so the stitching was, oh, yo, yo, yo. So uh, the stitching was uncomfortable because she didn't numb me at first until I was like, oh, ow. And she was like, okay, let me numb you. So she numbed me. Uh, took her a while to stitch me up. I felt like maybe it was second degree tear, but she said it was first degree. But it took me, to, maybe it took about like five to 10 minutes, it felt like. And Jason was watching the entire thing. Like before the birth even happened, I asked him, 
And I asked him, I'm like, Jason, are you gonna like watch down there? Are you gonna watch her head crown? He's like, oh no, like, ugh, I'm too screamish. But the entire time he watched the entire thing. He said he watched her head come out. He watched uh, the oh, my OB stitch me up. And he was like, it was quite cool and fascinating. And I was like, disgusting, disgusting. Like, if, uh, I, if I could have watched Ruby come out, I probably would have. But I think what grossed me out the most was the stitching part. Because I did see the reflection of my vagina in the big light behind my OB's head. I saw all the blood. I saw her hand, you know, stitching up my vagina. I closed my eyes. Because I had, I had this thing where if I see the pain happening, like if I saw her stitching me up, I, I think I trained my brain to psychologically intensify that feeling if I see it. So if I don't see it, the pain wouldn't be as bad, you know? What was even more painful than the stitching was when she had to dab and to clean my vagina area. She dabbed me with the driest paper towels and she like pushed it up against my perennial area and it hurt because it was so sore after, you know, giving birth. So every time she dabbed me, I was like, just like, oh, like wincing in pain as Ruby was on my chest. I was like, oh, I was like gripping the bed and she was like, sorry, sorry, I'm almost done. And I was like, no, it's okay. So she, you know, cleaned me up down there. Uh, Ruby was like crying on my chest. She was so small and cute. And uh, after that, they, uh, my OB was like, uh, I forgot what she said to me. Probably like follow up appointment for my uh, six week checkup and stuff like that. She uh, congratulated me and said that she'll see me later that day. And the nurses told me to, you know, we had to wait in the delivery room until the wheelchair came because they still had to set up the, our postpartum delivery, not delivery room, our postpartum care room, whatever, because uh, when they did the COVID swab test uh, on me, they did that, I think, right when I hopped on to the delivery bed, they had to like test me. I had COVID. And that's when they <clears throat> came in. So after I gave birth, they were like, so you have COVID. And I was like, oh shit. And they're like, do you have any symptoms? And I said, no, I have absolutely no symptoms. So they're like, hmm. So that fortunately uh, gave us a private suite, which would have cost like an extra $300 or something. So because if I didn't have COVID, we would be sharing another sharing a room with another mom. They had to set up the private room, so we were laying there in the delivery room for a good while. I don't know why they were taking so long, um, but finally the wheelchair came, uh, you know, they wheeled us down. They had a little, um, I think the little like NICU looking bed for her because they, cause they said since I had COVID, they didn't want Ruby to catch COVID. So we had to wear these special masks, which Jason and I really didn't. We just kept our like regular masks on. So they gave us special masks and told us that Ruby should be in the little NICU bed most for most of the time, and unless I was feeding her or changing her, you know, to prevent her from getting it. Jason, it's funny because they didn't they didn't test Jason and they weren't really concerned about him, but he did have to wear the yellow like scrubs uh, every time he had to carry her, but obviously he took it off for most of the time. That was it. Yeah, we stayed at the hospital for two nights, three days because of the storm. Uh, they didn't want us to leave the hospital in the, the weather conditions. And yeah, I was cluster feeding right off the bat. And not gonna lie, it hurts for the first like couple days of breastfeeding my for the first i think five days my nipples were like blistered and jason was even concerned he's like should we should you worry about that because it was really blistered but i was applying the nipple cream the lanolin nipple cream after each feeding session so whether that be like 10 times a day i would be replying that cream 
like no other. I was just like, I just kept putting it on. And I think that really helped because I stopped putting on that cream when it's, once I started getting the hang of it because uh, I was very fortunate to have a baby that latched on pretty quickly. Um, she like caught up really quick and yeah, I did. I stopped using the, the nipple cream after I think like two weeks, but after using it consistently. Yeah, I don't want to go into much details about my postpartum phase after that. I think that that might be another video, but in today's video, I just want to, I just wanted to share my fortunate fast delivery of Ruby. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching this video. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.